think Angel will eventually be a good pro. I don't think Angel will come into the league immediately and dominate the way people think she will. And I say that for people who have never watched a WNBA game. It's good. Like there's talent. Like these women can play. And because there are very few roster spots. Like it's a real job. Mm -hmm. So people look at new players coming in, whether that's out of college, players who've been overseas, mm -hmm. and they look at that and say, oh, you trying to come take my job. Like, no, nah, it's not going to be that easy. So will Caitlin Clark be a good pro? Absolutely. Will Caitlin Clark come into the WNBA and do what she's doing right now? Immediately? Absolutely not. Not going to happen. Okay. Not on the right team? Like, no issues with Caitlin. Her breaking the record, I think, obviously, is a tremendous accomplishment. Although... You know, we could get into that discussion also because there was a big debate on Lynette Woodard having yeah. the actual record. Caitlin Clark's haters are back at it again, and this time they're making even more absurd claims than they ever made before. From racist comments to physically assaulting her in games, Clark's haters and opponents have lost their minds because of her astronomical success as a rookie. However, none of this is affecting Clark because she simply chooses to be the GOAT rather than get tangled in the politics of WNBA. The most interesting part is that with every hater that comes out against her, Clark stacks up another record. And this time is no different because she just made history once again. On September 14, 2024, Caitlin Clark shocked the whole world after she shattered the single-season assist record of Alyssa Thomas, proving to everyone that the haters made absolutely no difference to her game. The original record was of 316 assists and Caitlin Clark came out on top with 321 assists. However, this record wasn't the only amazing thing she did that night. In the game against the Las Vegas Aces, she scored 18 points, put up 9 assists, and 8 rebounds. This is what I call consistency and a legendary level of playing ball. Clark has time and again solidified her position by making such records and pumping out performances on the basketball court that were never seen before. For example, let's talk about the game against Phoenix Mercury on August 21st, 2024. We all saw that game and from the beginning, it was clear that Clark was not going to tread lightly. That night, she dished out 32 points and 10 assists, and all of this was done in the most casual manner. Her body language showed absolutely no pressure she did not even break a sweat, and all she did was play the game like it was supposed to be played. In this game, Caitlin Clark beat the record of Maya Moore by having the most consecutive games with more than 30 points in the history of the WNBA. Now, tell me, is this something any other player can do? Absolutely not. It's only the one and only, the legendary Caitlin Clark who can put up such a show and beat records like they're nothing. And if that isn't enough for you all to believe that she is literally the greatest WNBA player of all time, let's go back to September 3, 2024, when the Fever played against Seattle Storm. In that game, Clark made 28 points with 12 assists, and with that, she single-handedly took her team to victory. Who just led the Indiana Fever to an above 500 record for the first time in five years. By the way, she's the second leading scorer at 23.4 points per game over the last 12 games. The Indiana Fever owned the WNBA record for most consecutive games under 500, by the way, with 189 until recently, of course, another day. Now the team is setting WNBA attendance records with over 500,000 fans over their first 33 games this season. Some have compared Caitlin Clark. These numbers, records, and consecutive wins show that Caitlin Clark is doing something that no other player in history has done. She's just a rookie, and she's making her haters look like fools because nobody believed that Caitlin would perform in the WNBA the same way she used to back in college. Cheryl Swoops is literally one of the biggest Caitlin Clark haters right now, and she was the one who said that there is absolutely no way that Clark would pump out the same level of performance in WNBA as she did in college. But that's all debunked now, isn't it? She has become Rookie of the Year. Her name is literally in the MVP talk. And last but not the least, she is the only rookie in WNBA history to have two triple doubles. Working on McDonald, who gives it a swipe. Clark, step back, hits a three! Five triples, Caitlin, go ahead and shoot until your arm falls off. And Mitchell knocks that one away. Here comes Clark going the other way. Clark going behind the back. Oh, it's Boston, an and one.
All Caitlin Clark is doing right now is playing ball and making even the most seasoned professionals of WNBA and even the NBA look like amateurs. Her game on the court is plain legendary, and for a rookie, what she has done is absolutely mind-blowing. Yet, she faces a ton of criticism and hate. And yes, it is hate because constructive criticism is very different, and let's face it, nobody is giving her constructive criticism. Recently, Molly Kareem from ESPN got into a heated debate with Stephen A. Smith when she tried to hate on Clark, saying that she is not the only one who deserves to be praised but other WNBA players should also be recognized for what they have done for women's basketball. But I must say, Shay Shay, I, I'm disappointed in you. And, and, and Molly, I'm disappointed in you. I'm just, uh, because we've been this first. What time. happened? We, 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 the, the, the kind of heat that me and Shannon have had to take. Molly, what's up? You understand? Uh, because here's where I'm at, Molly. Where are all the ladies at? Huh? What, did, what did I say? I mean, uh, who's the bad guy, Shay Shay? It me. It me. We were the bad guy, Shay Shay. Me and you, we were talking about this girl, Caitlin Clark. Oh, let, let, me throw, let me throw this out. Oh, By the Stephen way, what did you think? Anybody discussion. didn't think Ain't she no was going to be successful or not play. It was just that we felt the other players in the W deserve shine as well. M Molly, Molly. I said, really, Molly? Wow. Day. We, really? they jumped on us. They jumped on us, Molly. They jumped on us as a show. They jumped on us as a show when we were talking about it. Caitlin Clark, all the ladies out there, I, 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 I love them. Monica, uh, Andrea, Janae, all of you. All of you. I'm, I'm looking for everybody, okay? I, I ain't going to look for Cheryl Swoop. She got issues right now. I understand that. You understand what I'm saying? With people getting on about Caitlin Clark. We'll talk about that another day. But here's what we go. We're going to stay on Caitlin Clark for a second here, okay? There is no question. The race for Rookie of the year is over. After what they did to the sky, after they won their fourth straight, after they're over 500, they were just 500 the other day for the first time in two years when they were two and two. These they, they doing their thing. And Caitlin Clark, last 12 games, 23.4 points of 47% shooting, second leading scorer in the entire WNBA behind the, the monster that is Asia Wilson, who's going to be league MVP and deserves it, by the way. The reigning two-time champion, who probably is going to three-peat in my estimation. She is just something special. Best player in the world as far as I'm concerned, okay? We got that going on 10.6 assists for Caitlin Clark leads the league she's the league assist leader okay nine and three since July 6th third best record in the WNBA over this time behind Minnesota she just couldn't accept the fact that it was Caitlin Clark who was getting all the love and not anybody else because well who else is even at the same level as Clark is Angel Reese there no is Chenity Carter there nope is Diamond to Shields there not even close why would anybody else get the recognition and love like Kelton Clark when they are not even close to her records and scores? This is exactly what has bothered Angel Reese for quite some time and pushed her to the point where she cried like a baby in front of the camera, talking about how she should also be appreciated and not only Caitlin Clark. My question is why should she be appreciated the same way Caitlin is being appreciated? Has she broken the records like Clark? Has she scored like Clark? Has she picked up her team from rock bottom and made them come out on top within just a year? No, she has done nothing of the sort, and yet, these people have the audacity to demand the same level of respect and recognition as Caitlin Clark. Let me just play the clip of Angel Reese once again, where she is begging for attention. I think so many people are watching women's basketball right now. Yeah. It all started from the national championship game, and I've been dealing with this for two years now. And understanding, like, yeah, negative things have probably been said about me, but honestly, I'll take that because look where women's basketball is. People are talking about women's basketball, but you never would think that we'd be talking about women's basketball. People are pulling up to games. We got celebrities coming to games, sold out arenas, like, just because of one single game. And just looking at that, like, I'll take that role. I'll take the bad guy role, and I'll continue to take that on and be that for, the, for my teammates. And if I want to be that, and I know I'll go down to history, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watching women's basketball is not just because of one person. It's because of me, too, and I want y'all to realize that. Like, it's not just because of one person. A lot of us have done so much for this game, and Kennedy has been here before, obviously, but there are so many great players in this league that have deserved this for a really, really long time, and luckily, it's coming now. Everybody has seen this clip at this point, and every time I play it, it just seems more ridiculous. If you want to be in the same league as Caitlin Clark, you have to play like she does. You need to stack up 30-point games. You need to break records of WNBA legends. There is no way in hell that you're going to come out on top and be respected if you keep begging for attention in front of the cameras and in press conferences. After looking at Clark's haters and analyzing everything that is happening, I've come to the conclusion 
conclusion that haters like Molly Kawaram, Cheryl Swoops, and Angel Reese have nothing to do other than make derogatory comments against Caitlyn. They want to picture her insane success as something that is unjust to the rest of the players. You see how ridiculous it is. They're so jealous of Clark that they just can't accept that a white, young rookie player is so good that she's running circles around the most seasoned basketball players. But all of this means absolutely nothing to Clark and her fans. You know why? Because she is constantly making records, getting better at the game, and proving that no matter what haters say, she is still holding the crown of queen of the WNBA proudly. We saw the play in the third quarter where Carter kind of decked you. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to that and stay within yourself? I feel like I'm just at the point where you accept it um, and don't retaliate. Like, you know, just let them hit you, be what it is. Don't let it get inside your head. Um, and know it's coming. I think at this point, like, I know I'm going to take a couple hard shots a game. It is what it is, I guess. I don't know. It is what it is. This is her response to her haters. It takes a lot of guts to reach this level of security because Caitlyn knows she can't afford to let these haters get to her and mess with her game. At this point, it's just childish to see full-grown women hating on Caitlyn Clark, a rookie who is extremely good at the game. Why can't you just accept that a young white girl can play ball? As Shannon Sharp says, it's the same thing with Caitlyn Clark as it was with Eminem. People just can't believe that a white girl who is just getting into the professional aspect is hooping better than anybody else. She can play. Yeah. Well, what do you think about this situation? Will Caitlyn continue to shut her haters up with her game results? Or will there come a time when she finally calls these women out for being salty just because they're not at the same level as her? Share your opinions with me in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.